your target size should be, well, how much can you effectively deploy as an asset manager? All right, what's up guys? Today we're gonna be talking about how much money you should raise when you're launching a fund. Is it thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions, or is it even billions? A lot of it comes down to aligning your capital with your capacity, which we'll get into in a few minutes and talk about some of the pro cons as you navigate this big decision of how much money should you raise for your first fund or even subsequent funds after that. So let's get into it. All right, so when you guys are getting ready to take your product to market, you're gonna come across the question, how much money should I actually raise? On your pitch deck, on your slides, it's gonna be in your offering docs, a number that you have to put in of your target raise. Now, there's actually three numbers involved in that decision. There's gonna be a target raise, there's going to be a maximum raise, and there's gonna be a minimum raise. Let's first start with the minimum. On your minimum fundraise, you really just need enough money to take down your first deal. Let's say you wanna take down 10 multifamily properties and each property is gonna require about $10 million of equity. Some people think that you'll need $100 million to start your fund. Totally false. You really just need enough to take down one deal in a closed-ended vehicle. Raise that $10 million and you can launch your fund and you're gonna have an additional window of 18 to 24 months called your commitment period where you can raise additional money. So let's say you targeted 100 million. You start with 10 and throughout the life of the fund, you're only able to raise 50. So what's the downside of that? There's a couple things from a diversification lens. You're selling investors on diversification by being allocated to a fund. And if you're only now able to take down five assets instead of 10, you're less diversified. Not a crucial item, but something that LPs definitely think about. A lot of emerging managers feel like they'll be deemed a failure if they don't raise as much as their target raise. And that's really not true. A lot of LPs won't look at you like that. Ultimately, it's probably going to be fine if they've already allocated and committed and signed the sub docs. And then you just need to perform and generate a good return and you'll be just fine on the next fund. But there's really not a ton of downside to falling short on your target race. It happens all the time due to external market factors. The market might drop, interest rates might go up. It just might be a bad fundraising environment. And LPs understand that. Pro tip though, in your offering documents, this isn't legal advice. Just make sure that you're not limiting yourself to any concentration requirements. Your PPM will often have a concession in there that says maybe 15% of your portfolio can't go into one asset. That makes sense if you're targeting 10 assets, but what happens if you only have enough money to take down five? Your concentration of those assets is gonna be past that 15% mark. So I encourage emerging managers to build a little more flexibility into their offering documents in the event that they don't raise as much as they're targeting. Again, as you're getting ready to take your fund to market, that's one of the first things you actually have to decide is what is my target raise? Because LPs are gonna ask you and it's gonna be on your pitch deck, it's gonna be on your offering documents and you need to have a number there. So oftentimes when clients come to me and they're pitching me on their emerging funds, there are disadvantages to starting too low. If you come to me with a $5 million opportunity, for some reason, there's just some sort of lack of legitimacy that comes with raising small money. I don't know what it is, it's just purely psychological. So if you're going to raise a smaller fund, I'd say less than 10 million is your target. You should have reasons why you're raising so little. Maybe it could be, hey, look, you know, this is our first blind pool fund. So we're just raising $5 million as a trial, but I want to see that there's legs behind it. I want to see that there's going to be a fund two with 25 million and a fund three with 50 or a hundred million. And these things are going to help LPs want to be invested with you long-term. Larger institutional capital allocators want to be with you long term. They don't want to just invest in this one opportunity or this one deal, but they want to know that they can put money with you this year on your next fund and for the next decade and keep re-upping to your subsequent products. If you are raising smaller amounts, just be sure to give me a good reason why you're raising a smaller amount of money to help build legitimacy. Another thing that you should consider when you're determining your target amount is if you are raising smaller amounts of money, you might disqualify yourself from even getting in the room with these larger allocators. A lot of big investors have what they call a minimum check size, and I'm guilty of this too. Last year, I took a $150 million raise to a software 
Sovereign Wealth Fund. It was a great opportunity and I was really excited about it. I only got into the meeting because I'm friends with one of the guys on the investments team. But as we started talking about the opportunity, their minimum check size was $300 million. It wasn't even a consideration for them to look at this opportunity because it was a fundamental disconnect between the size of their offering and the offering I was bringing to the table. So again, if you're raising a smaller amount of money, just be sure you're aligning that to the right investors as you take that to market. So we've talked about the minimum. You just need enough for one deal or if in an open-ended vehicle, you need enough to break even. Your target size should be, well, how much can you effectively deploy as an asset manager? So as an emerging manager, you really just have to ask yourself, well, how much money can I effectively deploy over the course of your acquisitions period in order to help determine your target raise. So we've talked about minimum, we've talked about your target, now what's your maximum? So once you reach your target, you're gonna be called oversubscribed as a fund. And I'll tell you what, that looks really sexy to a lot of LPs. It just looks really good. It shows that your offering had so much demand that you were oversubscribed to it. So that's maybe an additional $10 million or whatever you deem as your maximum. I don't really care. A lot of institutions won't really care. They just wanna care that you can effectively deploy that capital. But I've seen some emerging managers that set a lower target with a higher max so they can hit that target sooner and say that they're oversubscribed and get that momentum capital going. I will say that your industry might determine or sway your decision in how much you should target on your initial raise. Guess what? It's harder to deploy a lot of money. You look at SoftBank right now, they just raised a hundred billion dollar fund and they are having a hard time deploying a hundred billion dollars effectively. So again, it goes back to the question, well, how much capital can you effectively deploy as an emerging manager? I would encourage you to stay on the smaller side. You might make more money managing a larger fund, you're going to typically perform better with smaller AUM. If you're in VC or hedge funds, it's more common to start a little smaller. Private equity and real estate, depending on the real estate strategy, typically requires more capital up front. But there's no rule or thumb or rhyme or reason. It really just depends. It's all about aligning your capital with your capacity. What I mean by that is you might have capital demands out the door and that's great. It all goes back to your ability to effectively deploy that. People will always say that I've got a $100 million pipeline, meaning that you have about 100 million worth of assets that you could effectively deploy with the capital you raised. So if you have a $100 million pipeline, should you raise a $100 million fund? Probably not. A good rule of thumb is that you should probably raise about a third of whatever your pipeline looks like. If you've got a pipeline of $100 million, a good raise would be between 30 to 40 million. Why? Because you're not gonna invest in every deal that comes across your table. Investors wanna see that you're doing your due diligence, you're eliminating deals, and you're choosing the best deal possible with their money. It's important, again, to be on that more conservative side as you're just starting out because ultimately the biggest KPI is your ability to perform and generate returns for your investors. Again, it may seem sexy to raise $100 million or a couple hundred million dollars on your first fund, but don't raise $100 million or these big numbers unless you can effectively deploy it. Some of you do have the networks to support a larger raise. So if you do have the networks to support that is probably the only scenario that you should go and pursue a large raise on your first fund. All right, guys, to wrap up today, let's just remember that you have a minimum raise, you've got a target raise, and you've got a maximum raise. The one the investors see the most is your target raise. So be methodical about it. Be prudent in determining that number that you need when you go to market. And it all goes back to just your ability to align your capital, with your capacity. And as you guys do your research and you start shopping your product around, the market will tell you if you're trying to raise too much or too little. Let me know how much you guys are raising. Drop it in the comments below. I'd love to hear. If you want some tips, feel free to message me. Like and subscribe and we'll see you guys soon.